Today I'm working with Topaz Sharpen AI, the new version, version 3.2. I want to take a look at the new improved color and tone processing for RAW and DNG files. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you've ever watched any of my Topaz Sharpen AI or Denoise AI videos, you know I don't like to use either one of these products as a standalone app processing raw files, you know, in other words, denoising and sharpening raw files. I've never had very good success. I generally run my images first into Lightroom, do my basic raw processing there, do not add any noise reduction or sharpening, then send, after the basic edits, I send the image into Photoshop, and it's generally going to be a TIFF file, and once it's in Photoshop, then I'll add Sharpen AI or Denoise AI, and then I get great results. And I have videos showing you how I do that. The biggest problem I had when trying to use this as a standalone app for RAW files is was I would have color shifting on my images, and I didn't like that. The other reason, and this is not huge, you're not able to use your DCP or your color matching profiles. And to be clear, I'm referring to whenever you're processing that image inside of Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. The matching color profiles won't be there or the Adobe uh, color profiles won't be there. However, you will have a basic Adobe color profile that you can use, which in most cases is more than adequate. Well, I think that's enough explanation. Now let's get down to it. Okay, so I'm using uh, Sharpen AI as a standalone app. Now let's come up here to the preferences. And when we open up the preferences, now notice right here it says um, apply auto lens correction. That is turned on. Okay, so it'll automatically do lens corrections for you. And the other thing is uh, apply raw color correction. So depending if, and if I hover over here, it says when enabled sharpen AI will attempt to apply a camera specific color profile as well as improve overall color accuracy. This only applies when launching as a standalone app and saving to a non raw file type. In other words, this camera specific color profile will only be attached to images or say like in a TIFF or JPEG format, but not to raw files. If you want to work with raw files, that profile will not be attached. But I will say this, when you bring the image into Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw and you're working with it as a raw file, you will have a, a basic Adobe color profile that you can attach to the image. And the colors do not seem to be shifted. Once you process the image in Sharpen AI, then you can send it into Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw and continue working in the raw format. Before I leave preferences, make sure you have apply auto lens correction and apply raw color correction toggled on. If not, when you output uh, TIFF files or JPEG files, the corrections will not be applied. So make sure you have those toggled on. Now, I don't believe uh, auto lens corrections applies to raw files. It's only TIFF and JPEG files. I'm pretty sure, not 100%, but pretty sure. But I do know this, when you take this... Uh, process the image and send it into Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, you will be able to apply lens corrections on the file there. And you'll also be able to add the Adobe Color Profile or the Adobe Black and White Profile to this raw file. Camera matching profiles, Adobe profiles, or if you have a linear profile, will not be available. All right, enough of that. And now it's time to process an image. So let's go ahead and click on Browse. And I'm going to go quick here. Let me just find an image. I'm going to work on this image right here. It's a raw file, so let me click it and click open. Now, you can also choose several images and batch process images, but I'm only working on one image today. Now, I'm in a side-by-side -side view. The left side image is the original. The right side image is the process. Now, I'm in image quality, and it's set for auto, so it's going to pick the model that it thinks I should use for this image, and it's choosing too soft. And it's right now it's in the normal mode here and, and my settings are in auto. So it's picking my settings for me, but that's too soft. And now let's try, and it looks, it looks, it looks pretty good. Let's try out of focus. Give it a second here to update itself. And yeah, that's, that's not bad. Let's try motion blur. See what kind of result we get here. Okay, and that looks pretty good too. 
So what do I want? And most of my images have motion blur type problems. So I think I'm going to try motion blur first, but I have a lot of noise in here, as you can see. So let's try the very noisy model here and see what kind of result we get. See if it can get rid of that noise. Yeah. And look, it totally eliminates that noise. And it looks good. Let me see what happens if I give it a little bit more sharpness. So we'll pull up the remove blur to the right. And yeah, look at that. Now that looks beautiful to me. Let me go ahead and go around the rest of the image and make sure there's no kind of weird artifacts happening anywhere. I find this is super important that you do this because you want to get this right. You don't want to see any artifacts. And a lot of people will complain. They'll say, I'm seeing artifacts. Well, you may have used the wrong model and you may have used, you may have overdone your remove blur setting. You may have went too high. So you got to be careful there. But look at that. I have no noise. The blur is gone. I'm happy with it. So at this point, it said too soft, but I think uh, motion blur is going to be good. But just for the heck of it, while we're still in here, Give it a chance to re-render again. So that looks beautiful and I'm happy with this, but let me try too soft. Too soft under very noisy. Let me see what happens if I really pull up the remove blur to the right. See if I can get a better look. Yeah, it's really not too bad, but I think, I think the motion blur looked better. So I'm going to go with that motion blur with a remove blur setting of 71 and a suppressed noise setting of 36. And I'm not going to add any grain to it. I don't need it. I think everything looks good. Now all I need to do is click on save image. And when I do, I have this dialog box that comes up here. Now we have different choices here under image format. You know, we could send it out as a JPEG, TIFF, PNG, DNG. Now you have all these different formats here. Now, in case you're wondering why they have two different TIFF formats and two different JPEG formats, they're the same. It's just however do you want to save your file. Do you want it to be JPEG, JPG, or JPEG? I'm just going to use the preserved source format, which it was a raw file, remember. I'm going to put it back to the same source directory. Now all I have to do is press save. And now all we need to do is wait about 10 seconds for it to be done processing. I'm letting this process in real time. Hey, let me know what kind of times you're getting for your processing. And also, as soon as it's done, which it's done now, the next stop will be Lightroom and we'll get a look at our results. Here we are in Lightroom. I'm in the develop module and this is the original DNG file with no adjustments on it. Now let's compare the result that we just got from uh, Topaz Sharpen AI. Remember, we processed it, we processed it as a raw file, and this is what it looks like. It's definitely darker, but the colors are all there and the colors are right. But notice one thing, if we come over here to the basic section, it says profile missing. Okay, that's not a problem because all you need to do is uh, if you click the drop down here, you have a choice between color and monochrome. Choose color. So like, remember I told you that when we were processing this in uh, Sharpen AI, I said there is a color profile for you that Adobe gives you to use. So you got that right there. So that's what it looks like with the color profile. And it looks really good. Now, again, here, let's compare the original raw file to the uh, result that we got back from Sharpen AI. Let's zoom in and we can see there's no noise and it's totally sharp. I'm zoomed into 200%, so it looks really good. Now let's just do a little bit of processing on it. Let's click the auto button and see what kind of result we get. Okay, it makes it a little bit on the darker side. It doesn't look bad. I think I'll open up the exposure a little bit. Let's just process this. I'll open up the exposure, uh, check my white and black point. I'm clipping a little bit on the white, so I'll pull that back. Let's... Uh, Getting a slight bit of clip in the black point. That's not a big problem, but let's just get rid of it. Maybe right around there. Maybe give it a little bit of extra contrast. Not much, just a little bit. And uh, do we want to open up the shadows? Maybe just slightly. Let's open up the shadows slightly. And uh, let's see. Vibrance looks pretty good. How about saturation? Uh, let me give it a little more vibrance and see. I don't know. It looks pretty good where it is. And then we could go into HSL color and do some more further tweaking on the color. 
But here's one thing I do want to show you. Uh, make sure your detail's turned off because you don't need any detail. You don't need sharpening, noise reduction, or even color uh, noise reduction. Or you can just click this off to make sure that's not on. But here's something you can do. Come to Lens Corrections, and you can enable your lens corrections, remove chromatic aberrations, and enable profile corrections. And because that'll all work for you, which is kind of cool. So those lens corrections do work right here inside of Photoshop. But we don't have our matching color profiles and we don't have our matching camera profiles, but we do have a standard Adobe color profile and an Adobe black and white profile. And then if you have any other special type profiles, like artistic profiles or anything, you can use any of those profiles that you want. But there you go. I'm happy that Topaz are improving Topaz Sharpen AI and Denoise AI to work better as raw processors for all of, of you who like to work in the raw format when you're doing your denoising and your sharpening. It's getting better and they're improving it all the time. So they are moving in the right direction and that's a good thing. Well, there it is. Today I was working with the newest update of uh, Topaz Sharpen AI version 3.2 working with it as a standalone app on a raw file, doing my noise reduction and sharpening all in one product, and then sending that into Lightroom as a raw file. And I continued to process it as a raw file. I wasn't able to do that before. Now we can do that. And uh, give it a try yourself and let me know what kind of results you're getting. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.